There are over 400 species of spider in the deserts of the US. Most of them are harmless, but there are a few you wouldn't want to be bit by. From a mysterious spider with insanely huge venom glands to a toxic wandering spider no one's ever even seen before, these deserts are hiding some potentially dangerous secrets. And the worst of them might have the most destructive bite of any creature in North America. At the height of the monsoon season, a peculiar weird little spider creeps out of its burrows in the the rocky valleys of the Sonoran Desert. At first glance, this might look like a trapdoor spider or maybe some kind of black widow, but it's actually neither. This unassuming little arachnid is known as the primitive hunting spider, and it's so obscure that it's actually in its own family. There are only a handful of species known, and they're all found in the American Southwest and Northern Mexico. And like most other spiders, they're venomous. This is where it gets weird. Not a lot is known about these spiders, but what we do know is compared to their body size, they have the largest venom glands of any spider. That means these guys are packing a pretty serious wallop. But because they're so understudied and they're so rare, there's a good chance you've probably never heard of them. And this is one of those spiders where I suspect there's more to its bite than meets the eye. We only have one bite report ever from the primitive hunting spider. It was a teenager some years back who got tagged on the leg and reported immense pain, some swelling, and even some numbness after the bite. The fact that we have a bite report is rare among the spiders on this list, but the fact that it didn't cause any major systemic symptoms is interesting. The general consensus is that this particular species is not medically significant. However, what little we do know about their venom does make me wonder if there might be more to their bite. The closest relatives, evolutionarily, of the primitive hunting spider are the Sicariidae, the recluse and sand spiders, known to have some of the most destructive venoms on Earth. And when a venom assay was done on the venom of the primitive hunting spider species found most commonly in Arizona, it was found to share many compounds with the venom of the six-eyed sand spider. The six-eyed sand spider is probably the worst spider to be bitten by in the entire world. So the fact that this spider shares many venom toxins does raise a few alarm bells in my mind. Now, we didn't find any evidence of major cytotoxins in their venom, so I don't think it's going to cause crazy necrotic bites like you'd see with a recluse or a sand spider. But the fact that it's so similar and that it lives in these arid desert environments does make it possible that this spider could do some serious damage. Higher up into the desert mountains, occasionally you will stumble across weird, wispy, curtainy webs under rocks and logs. If you're curious enough to poke around, you might actually find a spider. And you'll notice it looks a little weird, doesn't it? When I first came across these spiders in the wild, I was actually shocked because the first thing they looked like was the Australian funnel webs. And it turns out we're not too far off. This is the curtain web spider. And once again, it's a very obscure group of arachnids that is found in its very own family, Euagridae. These spiders are truly primitive arachnids. They're in the group Megalomorphae, the primitive spiders, which are even more basal in their evolution than the primitive hunting spider. What's weird about certain lineages of megalomorphs is their venom seems to affect humans a lot more than other things, particularly with the Australian funnel web spiders and the mouse spiders. These curtain web spiders have that basic subterranean megalomorph look. Little cluster of beady eyes, proportionally gigantic parallel fangs pointing forward, and those tarantula-esque knobbly legs. But unlike most other megalomorphs, they have those huge spinnerets on the back used for spinning that wispy, curtainy web. And it's a feature found throughout the funnel web lineage. But what's also found in that funnel web lineage is that weird primate-specific toxin. Now, I could not find any bite reports anywhere on humans of the Uagra spiders, but these guys are actually found throughout the world. This family covers the entire southwest all the way into south Texas. There are species found in Australia. There are species in Central and South America. These guys are everywhere, but because they live at high elevations, typically underneath rocks and logs and stuff, they're not finding their way in people's houses. I'm not even sure if the males wander the same way that males of like funnel webs do. When I see spiders like this that are understudied, related to a dangerous group of spiders, and found in challenging habitats that might push them to more extreme venom toxicity, it does beg the question whether or not they're dangerous. Here's what I know. 
They are extraordinarily reluctant to bite. In fact, their main defense mechanism seems to be flight. They are wicked fast. These things teleport into the ether when they're disturbed. And because they're so small, I can't imagine their venom yield would be anything serious enough to actually affect human physiology. But black widows and brown recluses are small too, so you really never know. Are they highly venomous? It's one of those things where I would love to see more research on their actual venom components. We don't get that often. If the last one was a look-alike for the Sydney funnel web, this next one is a look-alike for an even scarier spider. Lurking in rocky washes across southeastern Arizona, is a flat, dusty-looking spider that most people probably will never see. They're almost exclusively out after dark, and I don't think they're coming in people's houses. I study a lot of spiders, and it was only fairly recently that I even learned that this particular group existed. This is the sand assassin spider, and you're probably going to start seeing a theme here. It is so obscure that, once again, it's in its own family, which I am not going to try and pronounce, but it's right here. These spiders, with their segmented, sandy appearance, resemble the six-eyed sand spiders of South America and Southern Africa. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the six-eyed sand spider is one of the most dangerous spiders you could ever be bitten by as a human. The six-eyed sand spider, which is not the sand assassin spider, and it's going to be confusing, so bear with me here, has a highly cytotoxic venom. This is a venom that is destroying cells, and there's no known cure for it. We don't have antivenom, meaning that if you're bitten by it, it is possible possible that it could be a death sentence. So it's a very scary spider to work with in the wild. Now, one of the reasons that they're so incredibly dangerous is because they live in these really rough, rugged desert habitats. So they need to have a venom that kills their prey quickly because they don't know when the next chance to get a meal is going to be. That is sort of similar to what happened with these sand assassin spiders. As far as we know, they're not even closely related to the six-eyed sand spider. In fact, we think their closest relatives are actually wolf spiders. They also seem to be a bit more active hunters, and their venom seems to be more neurotoxic. But they kill their prey very fast, and they live in very dry environments, very challenging habitats that, like the deserts of South America and South Africa, demand potent venoms to kill your prey quick, because you don't know when your next meal is coming along. Having worked with these spiders in the field, what I have noticed is that they are very skittish, very fast, and like wolf spiders, a little bit calculated. Once they calm down, they can be reasoned with, and they will sit there and clean themselves while they sit on your hand. There was a fleeting moment where I considered testing the bite, but because so little is known about these spiders and because of how similar they look to the six-eyed sand spider, I think you can forgive me for chickening out on that one. As far as we know, the appearance of these spiders is just convergent evolution with the six-eyed sand spiders. It is a useful body plan to wedge themselves underneath rocks during the day, and it's good camouflage in the sandy substrate when they're hunting out at night. They don't seem to exhibit the same behavior where they cover themselves with sand the same way the sand spiders do, so it's possible their venom didn't convergently evolve either. But, I mean, looking at these two things next to each other, I don't think I'd want to risk it. With this next spider, we're leaving the obscure families behind, and instead getting into families that we know are dangerous. But this particular spider is one that's very special, because this is the first time it's ever appearing in any human media. Because this is a spider that pretty much no one's seen before. While exploring the deserts of the southwest, my team and I actually came across a very unusual spider while looking for something totally different. We were out looking for snakes, and on a little pit stop, shining a rock cliff, a very odd-looking spider popped out from behind a rock. I can't give the exact location on this one because the research on this spider is ongoing, and I don't want to disrupt or in any way step on those toes, but this is a really insane spider that I wanted to share with you at home. The first thing we noticed was that it wasn't a wolf spider, but then we looked at the eyes. See, in the Americas, the eye configurations of spiders can sometimes tell you what family they're in, and a square of four eyes in the front is indicative of a very particular family, Tenidae, the wandering spiders, the same family that is home to the Brazilian wandering spider, the most venomous spider on Earth. The vast majority of tenids are harmless to people, but the general advice, because of how understudied most of the species are, is that with large wandering spiders, they should be treated as if they are medically significant. This is an arid environment, and an area that, prior to this find, was not known to even be home to wandering spiders. But the thing about desert habitats is, many times, the dryness and the scarcity of resources pushes venomous creatures to be much more toxic than their non-desert counterparts. The western black widow, for example, has the most toxic venom of any North American widow spider. The tiger rattlesnake, found in the southwest, has the most toxic venom of any reptile in the western hemisphere. 
year, and the Maricopa harvester ant is the most venomous insect in the world. So when we found a wandering spider in an arid environment, it immediately gave us pause. This particular species does not have a common name, and I'm going to leave it at genus in this video because the actual species it's a part of is currently under review, and I don't want to step on the toes of those researchers. But the most exciting thing about it is that we actually know basically nothing about it. Like other wandering spiders, we'd expect it to be a primarily neurotoxic venom. And the thing about wandering spider venoms is they tend to have a nice one-two punch of deadly effects. They have compounds that attack the sodium channels of their prey, shutting their nervous system down, but also compounds that attack the calcium channels of their prey, overstimulating, overexciting their nervous system and sending them in a world of paralyzing pain. When I first found this spider, I thought, what is a Florida wandering spider doing here? Because that's the only wandering spider that's native to the US that I've worked with in the past. And those spiders, despite not being much larger than this one, have been known to cause serious bites in humans. Things like intense systemic pain, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, sometimes lasting up to a week after the bite. Now with this particular species, the researchers that I got in contact with don't think that it's particularly dangerous to people. But there's always that caveat that at the end of the day, we don't know. As far as we know, no human has ever been bitten by this spider because very few humans have ever even come across it in the wild. So this one is just a big fat question mark. But due to the lineage it comes from, it's a spider that I'm very interested in, and I'm hoping to learn more about it in the near future. Lurking in rock crevices of canyons and desert washes across southeastern Arizona is a spider that actually probably looks very familiar to you. You're probably like, Spencer, it's a brown recluse. You've said on this channel before that brown recluses aren't that dangerous. And that's true, I stand by that. While there are fringe cases where brown recluse bites have gotten very, very bad, the vast majority of North American brown recluse bites have been not that serious to humans and are not generally a spider that I consider to be that dangerous. That being said, the brown recluse is not the only species in its family. And while this particular spider looks a lot like your common brown recluse, it could not be further from that. Let me introduce you to the Arizona recluse, Aloxoceles arizonica. This is a spider that I've come across quite a bit in my travels throughout the Sonoran Desert, and one that only recently did I learn might be hiding a very nasty secret. The family Sicariidae, which these spiders come from, is known for having one of the most unique spider venoms in the world. And actually, they're the only animal on the planet that has developed such a potent cytotoxic venom. This is literally a unique thing to Sicariid spiders. The active ingredient in their venom is called phospholipase D. It is a powerful cytotoxin that destroys the membrane of cells. If you've taken high school biology, you might be familiar with the phospholipid bilayer, which is a fancy term for the chemical structure of cell membranes. Phospholipase is an enzyme that breaks down that phospholipid bilayer, and that causes a little bit of a problem when every cell in your body has that phospholipid membrane. Now, the reason that a typical brown recluse isn't that dangerous, but a six-eyed sand spider is super dangerous, isn't just due to the potency of their venom or how much venom they have. There seems to be what we call enzymatic activity at play. What that basically means is how reactive that enzyme is. An enzyme is just a protein, a protein that catalyzes a chemical reaction. If an enzyme has low enzymatic activity, it probably doesn't cause much of that chemical reaction, which is why most typical brown recluse bites are an itchy welt that never shows any necrosis. Their enzymatic activity is very low. Things like six-eyed sand spiders and Chilean recluses have very high enzymatic activity, meaning they can basically cause an amputation or go systemic and destroy your organs leading to a very painful and untreatable death. Well, it turns out that the lab of Greta Binford, who is like the recluse expert in the world, studied a lot of different sand spider and recluse venoms to just see how active their phospholipase was. And one of the most active was the spider Hexophthema hanai, the African six-eyed sand spider. The Chilean recluse spider from South America also had this level of enzymatic activity. It's a smaller spider, but we do have lots of bite cases from them, and they kill people pretty much every year. And due to how active their venom is, despite being a tiny little spider, they cause systemic effects very, very frequently. Most of the North American recluse spiders have enzymatic activity on the very low end, so serious bite cases are extraordinarily rare. But guess who the exception is? Yep, Arizonica, the Arizona recluse spider. This creature was found to have enzymatic activity on par with the Chilean recluse and the African six-eyed sand spider. Now, as far as I can tell, and as far as I can find, 
there are no confirmed cases of this spider biting humans. It's not turning up in people's houses in Arizona. They like to live out in the desert, underneath rocks, and in like little gaps in the boulders on canyons. They're not really looking to invade people's space, but the fact that they're so toxic makes sense. They're living in remote, dry, challenging habitats where there's not a lot of food, so they have to be able to kill it quick when it comes across them. There's this big theme of desert animals being highly venomous. It's not because the desert is trying to kill people, it's just because it's survival of the fittest. Resources are scarce, so whatever little edge animals have to survive gets completely amplified over hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years of evolution. And that is the case with this Arizona recluse spider. They are seriously, seriously venomous. I suspect it's probably the worst spider to be bitten by in the US. Given the way its venom works, the size of the spider, and the types of habitats it's living in, if you are bitten by this spider, I would consider it to be a serious medical emergency. All the other spiders on this list, definitely up for debate and probably most likely harmless. Because they look super dangerous, because they have relation to dangerous spiders, it's fun to speculate on what their venom could do since we don't don't know. But this one, there's a good chance that if it was biting more people, it would have some human deaths to its name. These spiders are absolutely insane, and the arid desert habitats they call home have pushed them to these amazing extremes. Now, at the end of the day, this video is mostly speculation. I don't know what these spiders can definitely do to people because we just don't have data on it. I'm making my best guesses based on what little we know about their venom and their closest evolutionary relatives who we have studied in the lab. For all we know, none of these spiders are ever anything anyone needs to worry about. And because of the remote locations they live in, that's probably still true. But I'll go on the record and say, for these particular spiders, I don't really want to find out firsthand what they're capable of. The desert isn't the only habitat that pushes spiders and other creatures to insane extremes in terms of venom. The rainforest probably does it even more so. And wouldn't you have it, there are spiders in the Central and South American rainforest that I think could be potentially dangerous as well. If you want to learn about those spiders, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.